the best of the Paul Feinbaum podcast. And we welcome you to New Orleans. We have finally made it, and uh, not a moment too soon as uh, we get ready for an amazing scene. Uh, That uh, is the Ohio State band and collection of fans. I don't exactly know what they're doing over there, but uh, they are making a lot of noise. So if if I act like I'm not hearing anything, (laughs) there's a good reason for it. Uh, It is extremely loud, but uh, we welcome you to New Orleans where... We uh, will continue our coverage, obviously, of the uh, Sugar Bowl, the semifinals. So many other things are going on, and a very uh, impressive uh, guest list, to say the least, uh, as we get ready for tomorrow night. Uh, a lot has happened since we have seen you last, and some of it I've, I'm, I've been somewhat bewildered here the last couple of hours, uh, Tony, being with people, and I've been keeping an eye on the events of Atlanta, your uh, hometown. So for those who... Uh, have mercifully tuned away from the Chick-fil-A Bowl. Why don't you uh, give us an assessment of what in the world has happened there this afternoon? Well, Paul, quite honestly, if you're an SEC fan, it's painful to watch. Uh, Ole Miss is clearly not ready for the game. They have been absolutely overwhelmed by a TCU team who apparently thinks that Ole Miss picked the Final Four and left them out. It is, no, uh, TCU is a great football team, but Ole Miss has played very, very badly. has been really overwhelmed. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, it, it's been remarkable just kind of watching it in bits uh, since uh, I arrived here uh, at our location at, at Manning, Tony. But, uh, you know, certainly LSU losing yesterday to Notre Dame. Yeah, I mean, it hurt if you're an SEC fan, but it hurt particularly since it's Notre Dame. But this is uh, one of those teams that many said in TCU that Alabama didn't want to play. and <laughs> I think they were right. Well, I mean, you sit there and watch the game. I mean, I was watching the hotel before I came over to see you. And, uh, very, very athletic. Trevon Borkin is the Big 12 uh, offensive player of the year. Just And they've, they've always been good defensively since Gary Patterson has been there. Ole Miss just simply can't match up. It's 42 to nothing now, and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better. Yeah, and you, know, you hate to make proclamations uh, on the final day of the year. And Mississippi State is uh, yet to play, but when you think about it, uh, going back to October 4th, when it didn't seem like there was another place in in the universe that mattered more than Oxford, Mississippi, and I know beating State helped solve the wound, but today pretty much undoes all of that. Well, the reality is is, is when they lost LaFont Treadwell in the last play there, against Auburn, that completely changed the dynamic of that football team. They were good on defense, but offensively, Bo Wallace had no safety value and then made mistake after mistake after mistake. And, yeah, Ole Miss never, even though you're right, they beat Mississippi State, but they never recovered from that loss to Auburn. And, and, you know, it's to their credit, uh, or to Mississippi State's discredit, uh, but but now, uh, I mean, I don't, listen, I mean, I'm a fan of Hugh Freeze, I'm a fan of Ole Miss, and uh, to say the least, we're both... uh, card-carrying flag waivers of the SEC, but uh, it, it's hard for me, Tony, and I, w- I want your thought because you've seen uh, as much as I have, unfortunately. Um, I mean, I can't, I mean, I, this, is a, this is a marquee game. This is a featured game. Uh, I mean, this is just an absolute uh, disembowelment and the disseration of a, of a program. It's, in spite of everything, you can't, you, can't, you can't walk past this. No, and I think Ole Miss, I think Hugh Freeze is going to have to go back and look at everything they did this season. They were good on the defensive side of the ball, but let's be honest, they relied too much on the quarterback yeah. on the offensive side of the ball. They never really had a consistent running game at all. And Bo Wallace, hey, it's either hot or cold. Yeah. It's either good or bad. And when he was bad, he was when he was good, he was good. He was good against Alabama. But when he's bad, uh, they, they really had no plan B. Let's talk a little bit more about just the bowl game. I mean, we'll, we'll try to talk about something other than this, although as it's going on, it's a little bit hard to ignore. Um, but uh, your impressions of some of the other SEC games, uh, certainly uh, in reading about LSU, with the, you know, with the Chavis situation, just your, your overall assessment of LSU right now. Well, LSU, uh, a team that lost five games that had more talent than it, they never, ever got the quarterback situation figured out. I mean, they, they're, they're so far removed from Zach Mettenberger throwing for 3,500 right. yards, and they never really came up with a plan, and none of the quarterbacks ever earned the job. Les Miles has got to get that figured out because if all they do is rely on Leonard Fournette, 
that's a team that's beatable. Now, John Chavis is going to Texas A&M. Now they got to find a new defensive coordinator. Les Miles has got some work to do. Yeah, and you know, one thing about being in Louisiana the morning after, uh, I mean, you know, the, the newspaper is here. Well, that's an exaggeration to say the newspaper is here, but the, whatever paper I read today, I think it was, from, I think it was Baton Rouge. Um, I mean, it, it was a very negative picture of, of, of the divorce, and that's understandable. But the biggest question really is what happens now for Les Miles. I mean, yeah, you can you can promote Leonard Fournette all you want, and the folks of this great city will do so, and, and rightfully so. But I don't know where LSU is right now in the SEC. Well, the fact, Paula, is the game has changed. Everybody understands the game has changed. Yeah. Nick Saban recognized that the game has changed and made made the move that he had to make to bring in Lane Kiffin and to change the offense. Les Miles, people people call him stubborn yeah, because he won't he won't make the changes that are necessary, but he's got to do it between now and next season. Yeah, and I, I, you know, it's a start with the defensive coordinator, and uh, certainly A&M has uh, upgraded. Uh, nice win for A&M. I want to ask you about Steve Spurrier. I realize uh, the, the summer – I almost said the Gators, by the way. It shows you how uh, – how delirious I am right now, but uh, the Gamecocks felt better, but they still don't feel very good. Well, listen, the fact of the matter is we all overrated South Carolina for a couple of different reasons. One, we, we, we didn't factor in how much Connor Shaw meant to that side of the ball, just making plays. Dylan Thompson, nice quarterback, no, nothing great shakes. We overrated their offensive line. They should have run the ball better. And we really overrated not only the losses, of Jadavian Clowney, but the rest of that defense, they just weren't very good defensively. They were horrid, really, all year long. And Steve Spurrier has got to figure that out. I think they'll be okay offensively, but they have got to come up with some kind of solution to the offensive side of the ball, but at least they got the win against Miami, and they got something to build on. Do you, th- do you think it ever came close, Tony, to Will Muschamp being in a quote-unquote coaching waiting situation in Columbia? You know, I, I really don't think it did. Will's been in that situation. Yeah. It's no fun uh, because he got he got burned by Mac Brown by doing that. So I, I think he, he looked at Auburn. He saw the upside at Auburn. He thought the talent level, uh, there was a chance to build quicker there overall. And Gus Malzahn's going to be there for a long time. So I, I think all things considered, the fact he coached at Auburn before, he, that was the difference there. And there is a... Uh, game here yeah and I, I have covered the sugar bowl probably not as often as you have and i realize it's still early in the day so to speak well in new orleans it is early in the day but i have never been here for an alabama game where i've run into more ohio state fans wow. or more uh, visitors I, I assume the alabama folks are going to show up <laughs> i assume i'm only a 10 minute walk from here in my hotel and i'm walking and i don't see any alabama fan now in all fairness, what we're seeing behind us here right. is, is is the Buckeye batch. No, it's, I, I, but yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering where all the well, Alabama people I, uh, are. I had uh, I was fortunate to have lunch at uh, uh, in the quarter today, and, that's a, uh, and I saw a lot of Alabama people at the restaurant I was at. Um, but on the streets, not inside you know, one of the famed eateries uh, in the country, I. Uh, it was all Buckeye. No, it's all Buckeye right now, but I bet you when, when, the, when the game starts yeah, tomorrow, no doubt. they'll be there. They, yeah. they always get the tickets. And I heard from one Alabama fan, hope Ohio State fans don't take offense, why well, waste a lot of time in New Orleans? We're going to Dallas <laughs> next week. Well, I, I, I've spoken to a lot of Ohio State people, and they don't feel that way. They, yeah. think, they think athletically they match up very well with Alabama. Urban Meyer has upgraded the recruiting since he's been there. And uh, they, they absolutely think they're going to win this game. Well, and, and by the way, uh, it's not up to me to tell them that they won't. Yeah. Although I will. Well, I think Alabama's going to win, yeah. too. Yeah. I don't know if it's going to be what the Vegas boys say, but I think Alabama's going to win the game. We uh, we, we had your uh, good friend and colleague, uh, former colleague, I should say, uh, Gary Danielson on last night. And uh, Gary just said, Oh, Ohio State's not ready. Uh, he said uh, he thinks Alabama will beat them handily. Well, you you look at what they did against Wisconsin in the in the Big Ten championship game, but that was against Wisconsin. Now, I've talked to enough people in the Big Ten. Wisconsin's a nice team, but athletically, they're nowhere near Ohio State, and they're certainly nowhere near Alabama. I just think Alabama's their de- defensive line is going to be more than Ohio State can handle. 
I think if they can shut down the running game or certainly slow it down, then then the young quarterback has nowhere to go. And so I, that's why I think Alabama's going to win it. They'll probably win comfortably. What do you think about in the the other game tomorrow? Well, you sit there and look at it, Paul, and, and I just think when Marcus Mariota is healthy, they are very, very difficult to beat. And Florida State has been living on the edge all year. So I, I'm picking Oregon to win the game, but I, I, I'll give you this caveat. If they're down three points and Jameis Winston yeah. has the ball with four minutes That's to go, ideal. they're going to win the game. Ohio, uh, Oregon is going to have to get, a, get get up a couple of scores because that kid, for all of his issues off the field, he is amazing with the ball in his hands in the final few minutes. We are here in New Orleans, as if you couldn't tell. Uh, the noise is behind us or to my right, your left, depending on how you're consuming this product today. Uh, is the Buckeye Bash, Urban Meyer walked through earlier. Uh, I don't know what the Buckeye Bash is. Uh, I, I know I took part in one a couple of years ago for Alabama, and they had uh, 15,000 people at the uh, convention center. There's not as many over there, but it sure sounds like it. It sure sounds like it, and they're excited. Well, listen, think about where they've come. I mean, they're only a few years removed from, away from being 6-6 six and six, and then not being eligible yeah. to go to a bowl, a certain sure. idol bowl. Urban Meyer comes in turns it around just like that and now they've got a shot at the national championship they're 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 very excited to be here well done tony thanks for starting us off you uh, did it in atlanta you did it here and you will do it in dallas absolutely paul thanks, thanks. you bet tony barnhart starting us off we're at mannings in new orleans uh i doubt where i haven't seen archie but i doubt he's uh he and eli are enjoying what's going on in Atlanta. We'll see you in a moment with a big guest list. This is the best of the Paul Feinbaum podcast. Ah, oh, we're back. Beautiful day. It was cold early, but it's gorgeous now as the uh, year 2014 begins to wind down. And uh, I met a number of people uh, in my first full year at ESPN, but uh, I think everyone can uh, accept honesty on this show. But I, I, no, no one I've enjoyed being around more than uh, than you. I hate the fact that all these people was on before me. Yeah, now you, you, you're, we wanted you earlier, but. Uh, you got the New Orleans and you changed. You did? No, I'm not. Oh, okay, all right. I've eaten well. I, I've eaten well. I know you have. <laughs> I know you have, but it hadn't even I had something for lunch today that was fried. What? Oh, yeah. That's I thought what? you should. I, John didn't have to take you to the hospital? Yeah, it's one of my favorite dishes in the world, and they, they invented it at the restaurant I went to. I figured, you know what, I'm not going to get the, you know, the, the kale salad with the, the broiled flounder. What you, you eat? Tried almond butter. That's what I'm talking about, big fella. I mean, is that, is that? That's it. That's it. Sounds, it sounds a bit fancy, but. Well, it's, it was a nice place. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it they, was. They, they invented it at the restaurant. I asked the maitre d'ace. I, 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 I ate fried, fried fish. Every year, but I'm in New Orleans. Other than okay. that, no way. All right, all right, I got you. No way I'm eating it later, though. Well, <laughs> my fried my fried allotment is, is one. Mine is, will is be on the flip side. If I eat something baked, something will be wrong with me here. Yeah. No. I got here and I had a I had a shrimp po' boy the size of the Mississippi River. The biggest I, you know, the biggest line I saw I've seen all day was at Mother's. It was down oh, the street yeah. and around. Oh, that's on a that's on a regular weekday. Is that is that where you, is that the shrimp poor, poor boy place? No, nah, I didn't get a poor boy from Mother's. I'm I'm gonna get me a plate of. But that's what they serve. It. When I go to Mother's, I tell you, this is how I order. Give me a little bit of everything and a lot of chicken. <laughs> that's how I order. Marcus Spears. What's up, Pete? Hey, Ohio yeah. State is ripping. Yeah. In New Orleans, man. Finally, I, I, I looked. I looked back here earlier, Marcus, and there were a thousand fans from Ohio State. And I said, "Where are my people?" <laughs> okay, I mean, where are my people? They, hey, they, they haven't shown up yet. Look, they ready they're, to go. They're, they're heading to Dallas. <laughs> they, <laughs> they already. They already had the Omni downtown. They just. They just went through Shreveport. <laughs> There's a game here tomorrow night. Paul throwing shots. <laughs> shots being fired. So, uh. This Ole, is college football, though. Ole Miss. Don't miss you saw it. it. I mean, I didn't see much of the game. I was in transit here and everywhere. It was a shellacking. And I tell you this. Now I'm sure 
that TCU not playing a Big 12 championship game hurt them. Yeah. Because all, all that, I mean, the, the, they didn't have that recent memory. Ohio State gave them that recent memory with the, with the win against Wisconsin. TCU looked as good as any college football team in the country today. Defense was flying around. Boykin was solid. I mean, they, they, the speed of the game, and uh, I, they had Bo Wallace flustered. It was, it was a, it was a, it was a good day for TCU and a real bad day for Ole Miss. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and yesterday was a tough day for LSU. We really get a chance to talk much about it. The game was ending as we were going off the air. But. You know, I wanted to, I wanted to not seem so upset yesterday about the non touchdown call. Yeah. Um, You've seen it now, but, but the more and more I think about it, it it burns my skin because sure. it was a, it, it obviously was a touchdown. Yeah, it was. I don't I think anybody. I don't, I don't think anybody would defend against that. But you do have to give Notre Dame credit. Yeah, because you look at Fournette too. He had a kickoff return in this big long run. Other than that, LSU scored 14 points. And uh, you, I mean, you don't account for an 86 yard run and a hundred yard kickoff return for putting points on the board, especially 14. But, you know, it, it, LSU had a had a rough day. Today may be worse, though. Yeah, today is. I mean, listen, yeah. uh, you know, losing a last-second field goal to Notre Dame. Uh, but this, this was this was one of those games uh, that, uh, you know, people were watching for SEC comparisons. Now, I mean, no game is more important than tomorrow night. That's it's infinitely yeah. more important. Yeah. Yeah. But they, they, almost – Lost to the wrong team. They, you they know lost. what? I thought. I said it earlier. We talked about it on your show a couple of days ago. I thought that this was this Ole Miss TCU game. I thought that this was the most important bowl game outside of the playoff because now, I mean, you try you try to disbarge and you try to say what well, SEC is dominant, and you would like to think that one of your better defenses out of the conference is going to play one yeah. of the better offenses. But forty-two to three. No, you can't. You now, can't. You now can't, I can't argue with you. Can't, you can't scrub it away. And and listen, uh, you know, people have been you know, bugging me all day. And I say bugging me. Uh, <laughs> hey, what about your? I, I mean, listen, I'm, I, I watch the same games as everyone else. You can't. Yeah. I'm not about to sit here and say that that's that's a good day for the for the league. P Town, you know everybody. You know they're gonna come after us, man. I mean, we, I mean we, we're fans of, of Ole Miss. Yeah, but yeah, there's no defending. There's right no now. defense of that. No defense of that. When you lose 42 to three, you pack it up. The unfortunate part is that you had those seniors, and then Tonsil got injured. Yeah, it just was insult to no. injury. No. But you think about that Ole Miss team and how bad it could be. You think about the Treadwell injury yeah. against Auburn. That they probably put, potentially would have won that game. Uh, well, if he hadn't been hurt, yeah. The, and, then, the and, then, and then you lose Tonsil today, and you lose in that fashion. Yeah, they took some death blows. No, was, I think more than anybody in the country. Yeah. It, it, by the way, it's not over. The week's not over yet. Right. right. <laughs> the Paul Firebomb show will be aired. <laughs> no, there, there, there's a game uh, about a mile and a half from here uh, that if you see anything. Other than a victory for Alabama, it's not a death blow. It's oh, it's a lock up the puppy. It, it's a Mardi Gras funeral march. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This whole this whole place will be as I got corrected by a fan. If that happens, this whole place will be scarlet and gray. Yeah, you know, it it'll be interesting, man. The, the more and more I look at Ohio State, the more and more I get intrigued with this yeah. game because they they have some they have some dominant individuals on that football team. We'll take a break. We're live in New Orleans. Butch Davis will uh, be among our guests the rest of the way and uh, see if I can talk this guy into hanging around. But there's food around, so I'm not sure that will be successful. <laughs> this is the best of the Paul Feinbaum podcast. Ah, yes. New Orleans, final few hours of this year. Hope it's been a good one. Hope next year is even better. And uh, it's been a lot of fun hanging out here on a little bit of a chilly day in uh, the Big Easy, but I'll take it. New Year's Eve in New Orleans means you're at a big game. It won't be chilly tonight. It's going to be hot, baby. New Year's Eve. Let's uh, apologize. To, uh, we have not had much opportunity to get the phone calls. But what would the uh, final show of 2014 be without the person who uh, undoubtedly had the most memorable call 
of 2014. That's when she called up and let Colin Cowter know that the Alabama Saban dynasty Let's was go not Phyllis. over. Let's go, Phyllis. Hey, Phyllis is on. <laughs> hey, hey, Paul. Hey, Marcus. Let me tell you something. You're my horse if you never win a race. If you've never won a race, you're still my horse. That's uh, what I'm talking about, baby. I'm so ex- I'm so excited about tomorrow night. And, and Ohio State, you, you, get, get over it. Get over it. You're not going to beat hey, Phyllis, Bama. Phyllis, do me a favor. Phyllis. Yeah. I have been, I've been here for three hours, and I met some really nice people from, from Ohio, but most of them have harassed me. Uh, and I haven't been able to fight back because I've been on the set and, and I couldn't couldn't find an Alabama fan until about 20 minutes ago. So would you say would you send a message to Buckeye Nation, please? Yes, I will. Buckeye Nation, Ohio State, the dynasty in Alabama is not over. It it is still going strong and it will still go strong after it has whipped your butt tomorrow night. Because that's exactly what we're going to do. Roll Tide, roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I just love football in the fall. Yeah, well, well, I know it's, it's, I know it's, now, it's winter now, but still, <laughs> I hate to see it end, Paul. Well, uh, Phyllis, if what you say is true, it will not end for. Oh, a while. it's not. Oh, that's right. We got Dallas. We've always yeah, got yeah. Dallas. We got to take Phyllis to dinner. Yeah, Phyllis, you want to oh. go to Dallas with Marcus and myself? Yeah. Marcus, I would love it. I'd love to just sit down and have a cup of coffee with you. Uh, we, oh, hey, Phyllis, that's not that's no no problem. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about too, bro. Believe me. <laughs> I just I just love you, Marcus. I do. Phyllis, I love you. And, and if it wasn't for the stomach virus I've had for the last week, I would have already <laughs> talked to you on the show. That's what I'm talking about. I was wondering where you were because I I was with Paul the last two days. I know, and, and I've watched you, I've listened to you, but uh, I, I, I was just got so weak from that stomach virus, but yeah. but, but I'm Are here now, better? Marcus, I'm here now, what you want to do? Hey, I'm, I'm waiting on you, I can't wait till next season when I get down there by you. Oh man, oh man, uh, I, I can't wait either. But next Paul, time we uh, Alabama, next time we head to Alabama, we will meet Phyllis. Uh, you know, can you maybe maybe halfway at the Bright Star, Phyllis? Would that work? It, it, that would be great. I know exactly where it's at. I've been I, there I, before. I think Marcus, and I love it. You, you, you think Marcus could find something to eat at the Bright Star? <laughs> oh yes, he there? could. Oh my, some of the Phyllis, best can food. you cook? Marcus is some of the best food you'll ever want to eat. Just, uh, I want to know, can, seriously, Marcus. Can you cook? Uh, Jimmy Coykus is a big Alabama fan. Owns, owns the Bright Star. It's in Bessemer, Alabama, where Bo Jackson grew up. It's halfway between Birmingham and Tuscaloosa, and there, there's a taste in New Orleans there. But it, you, you will. It's unbelievable. You, yes. <laughs> I kid you not, Maury. Yes. They have, they have a, there's, a, there's, there's a private room called the Bear Bryant Room where mm-hmm. we will seat you. But if mind. you ever eat there, Marcus, I, I, I'm okay with you'll that. be There's back. an Auburn room and a Bear Bryant room. I think you'll go. I, think I, re- I respect that. The Bear Bryant room gets a little better service. <laughs> well, can I bring my Alabama elephant and pom-pom okay, we, we will, with me, Paul? We will all converge on the Bright Star, and Marcus will. Bright Star. Phyllis, love Phyllis, it. I got a question for you. Sure. Can you cook? Oh, yes. I sure can. What's Southern what's home cooking. Uh, you Marcus, believe it. let me help you. Let her get over the summer virus before you let her cook. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. What's Everybody your best around here has uh, opted for me not to cook. <laughs> what's, your, what's your best dish, Phyllis? What's your best uh, dish? I like, I like a homemade meatloaf with uh, mashed potatoes and gravy. Ooh, and and uh, ketchup? Home, uh, fresh green how beans. Is your, uh, how is and, your cornbread, uh, Phyllis? Oh, uh, I make I make a killer buttermilk cornbread. You make it like you make. Is, is it soft? Like a man here likes cornbread, right? It, it's, it's got a crust to it, a real oh. golden crust, and oh. and I make it with buttermilk and, and from scratch. And What's that uh, mean? My family loves it, Marcus. <laughs> You know I the sounds I make on Nathan with something really good. Have you ever heard me do that? Make a sound about food? Ooh. <laughs> That don't even sound right coming from you, Peter. Yeah, Caesar, you know, eat. Caesar salad. Ooh. Ooh. Like, nobody's hype about that. All right, Phyllis. Dressing I'm, on the side. I'm going to get after that cornbread. I'll, I'll make you a phone. I will make you a phone. Be glad to, Marcus. Okay. And, and, and look, guys, I'm so excited about tomorrow night. I just can't hardly wait. And um, uh, Ohio State, you're not getting us. We're going to, no. we're going to Dallas. We're Let's go. We're going to Dallas. It's been a while since I've been in Dallas. It's been about what, three days since you've been in Dallas. Three days. Phyllis, let us hear it, and we're going to check out with you. Can I get a... 
Oh, she's, she's gone. gone. All right, all right. She's going to make check. cornbread. She's going to go make that buttermilk. <laughs> what is, is buttermilk cornbread? Oh, what? don't even try. Don't even try. Just just eat it when we get it. Okay. All right. We got a, we got a date. If I tried to explain that to you, it would sound like Chinese, Chinese arithmetic. Okay. All right. It's all great to me. Yep. Um, <laughs> Jerome is next in Birmingham. I say Jerome in the house. In the hit, I, 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 Paul? Hey, Jerome. What's going on, Paul? <laughs> you, you love this guy. Hey, well, happy, happy New Year, Paul. You and our old Marcus Spears. Happy hey, New Year, hey, Jerome. Man. Hey, listen to me, man. It, hey, we finna put an end to all this dog on suspicion. Listen, somebody forgot to tell Mississippi today, hey, show up in Atlanta, right, Paul? What happened to the state of Mississippi today, huh? Mississippi. Listen, listen. One Mississippi. What? Well, it's about, Two. is he relevant? Is he relevant? Like, we're going to hear all this talk. TCU should have been there, Paul. TCU ain't no big. TCU should have did what they did. Paul, they should have did it earlier in the year, Paul. We don't give a crap about TCU. And as far as Ohio State, Paul, listen to me, Paul, it's over. They just out there making a bunch of noise, Paul. To, to George Galloway, the bug, Paul, better known as the bug, Paul. We're going to crush their dreams tomorrow night, Paul. Listen to me. The tide, the tide is ready to roll, baby. We send the brain this thing to the house, Paul. Come on, Tyler, have a good day. <laughs> we got some Alabama fans showing up. Been a while. Been a while, man. They get ready for they get ready for the game like the team though. Yeah, they so. they, 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 they don't come to, come to they the got cor- curfew tonight. They don't come to the quarter and, and uh, trash talk. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, stop knocking on. Your Alabama fans who are who, are who are who have hit Marshall, Texas, turn around. The game's in New Orleans, <laughs> Dallas. Later. This is the best of the Paul Feinbaum podcast. We're back, uh, Marcus Pierce, for a few more minutes, and then he has to uh, let's get ready for the new year. I mean, don't let, don't let the uh, well, the show you, getting away. If you, if you think I'm gonna bring 2015 in my hotel room, you crazy? <laughs> I'm gonna be at the party, baby. Is there a party tonight? Man, I don't know. My wife would kill me. I went to a New Year's Eve party without her. Supposed to kiss under the mistletoe, man. She's not here, so. <laughs> you, okay. you never, okay, you never let the anything get in the way of a good party, huh? Nah, Listen. I'm, 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 I'm a, I'm a fool for a party, Paul. <laughs> I am. I love a great party. Me too. Me you too. know what, though, in my old age, man, I done got to the point where I'm like, what, my you, old are, age. Are you my, 30 yet? My 31 old age. I done got to the, I don't like to be in crowded areas too much anymore, man. Well, you, you're in a bad city for that. Yeah. Yeah. So I might I might have to go to one of the Paul Feinbaum private parties yeah, where no, there's cocktails. I, I will tell you the story. Soft uh, music. I was here, I think it was two years ago, for um, the Final Four. Oh, yeah. And I was at a restaurant. I wish I could remember the name of it. Maybe no, but anyway. So I hear, is that Blanken Paul Feinbaum? I'm like, oh, I mean, I'm like, I mean, it's somebody a, you didn't. It's, it was, I think it was Noah over there. Uh-huh. You've heard it. Um, and I turned around. It was Charles Bar. Oh wait. I mean, he was f bombing the f bomb. So we're talking, and he he ends up. Uh, I'll leave, I'll leave some of the part some of the parts out, but he became very interested in the group I was with. And he uh, he said, he kind of whispered to me. He said, uh, "What are you guys doing later?" I said, "I don't know." I mean, it was like, I'm just, it was "Whatever like, you doing, Debo?" Like, it, was, it was already like ten o'clock. I'm thinking, I, I had a show the next morning, uh, pretty early. So, Paul, I lost sound. Yeah, I've lost uh, my sound. Hey, it's okay. We just on national TV. Yeah, no big deal. No uh, big deal. I, I, we're back. I'm back. I think we're, we're coming and going. But uh, the point is. There it is. There we go. There it um, is. He goes, hey, uh, there's a, he said, Kid Rock's doing a private party at uh, the House of Blues. You weren't ready for that. And, I, I mean, I, listen, I don't I don't run with your Did crush. you go? I went. What? And not only do you, I mean, you've had this happen to you a thousand times. I mean, I'm, I'm not a pro athlete, so you walk in. And then, to the VIP. I mean, you go upstairs. Yeah. And there's Charles. You know, holding court. Uh, I, I don't think Michael was there, but uh, the Char- Char- I mean, names. Right. I mean, celebrities dropping out of the, out of the ceiling. And P Town. And P Town. I like it. So that's what I mean. I know you should have fell right in, man. I know it was a long drawn out story, but that's got kind you, of part you, you would like, wasn't it? That's my kind of part. Yeah. Yep. My own area 
where I can move well, around. Well, when you and I start touring the country. We're going to throw some parties. We're going we're gonna, we're we're gonna to get flyers printed up. See, this is how they do it where I'm from, all right? So if it's an event, you, my boys, they're here by the event in Louisiana, and then they'll call me or they'll call my manager, my best friend, Jamar, and they'll say, they'll say, it's cool to put Marcus on the flyer. And then we, I feel obligated because we've been friends since we were kids. So they put me on the flyer, and then I get to the party. And then Baton Rouge, it's a, it's a couple of nice places, but most places you got to just be in the crowd, yeah. right? So we'll get to the party, and I'm crowded, and then I'll stay like five minutes and get out of there. Oh. But in New Orleans, yeah. they got designated areas yeah. for people like me and you. Me, me. Pete Town, you're a big deal, man. I, I got <laughs> to keep, keep reiterating that so you start to believe it. I don't believe it. I'm just a... Well, look, I'm a big deal, all right? <laughs> <laughs> I like a guy who says, you know what? I'm a big deal. Well, so I'll move on. You getting cold? Yeah, we got. It. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit cold. Uh, K, K Dub, don't put that blanket on. K Dub, you're on with Marcus, the man. K Dub, what's hey. good, baby? What's up, there, Swag man? Hey, P, hey, P Town, Bees, Elf, Bees, or whatever you want to be called these days. Uh, no, I, I am. I, hey, K Dub, hey, hey, look, bro, K. you you the originator. You call P Town what you yeah. call him, bro. P Town, my name. That's what I deemed yeah, it. I mean, but, he, but you, you, Dub, were, you were here first. One, you're the only one that can call me something other than P Town. No doubt. Okay, then I appreciate that. But, but you got to stick with my man, Mark. He's trying to get you behind that velvet rope, baby. I mean, once that velvet <laughs> rope goes up, I mean, all the all the all the nerd VIP people got to stay behind that velvet rope, baby. He doesn't know he, all he, about he, that. He doesn't know. He knows all about that. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, you know, I'm you know, schooling them every every day. It's a every day. It's a lesson being taught. We gotta taught, go by K Dub's place when we get. You know, K Dub, you're are you in Bessemer too? Yeah, I see. I'm about to bring it up right now. I mean, nobody don't know who Bo Jackson is. You went to talking about the bright star here. That's where Bessemer is. Where Bo Jackson? Who ever heard of Bo Jackson? That be real. <laughs> this is the home of DJ K Dub. I'm in Bessemer right now. I be real. Holding it down, Bessemer, right Alabama. Now. So, but you know, I'll be at the game tomorrow. I'm about to go get a lineup. Explain the bees what a lineup is, right, quick, uh, Mark. You know what a lineup is? Obviously not. Let me explain. I kind of do, right. but I don't, I'm going to act like I don't. I'm do. losing my hair. I used to get them too, but I'm losing my hair. I still get one. I try, I'm trying to hold on, K Dub. I mean, you, so, you can teach me all so this. So when you, when you go to the barbershop, yeah. especially in the hood, mm -hmm. you, tell, you tell them you either want, I want a taper, I want a fade. It's a lot of different terms. But then you go in and you just get a lineup. Lineup is half the price of a haircut. Okay. So the lineup is to just the well, lineup is to just crisp the edges and well, make it define. You know, define. Do you know, do you know the Preach, biggest bro, rip off? In, do you, by the way, do you know the biggest rip off in American history? What is it? It's the fact that I still get charged full price for a haircut. Oh yeah, that's all. That's you just have all. You can do that you on your own. I mean. I, I could do that for you. I could do that with a, a Bic razor. There's no margin of error in your hair. Yeah. Yeah. But you mess up a black man's line, oh, he'll man. never come back. You, you know what? Uh, it's time. It's time. <laughs> 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 <Last> <laughs> hey, hey, Doug. No, I don't think. I think I was on television one time during this because it was before the show when I was on. I was on one one network show and people were in shock. In May, I went all the way. I shaved it all off. I don't, I'm going to ask you that in private. Okay. All right. Yeah, let's move on. Tate up. <laughs> get tightened up, Yo, man. We out, we out here in New Orleans waiting on you, brother. Them, them Ohio State fans still behind you. Get me out of trouble, man. No, nah, they all right. They represent. Hey, look, I tell, like I told people, you know, we had the TCU game earlier, and uh, a lot of people was taking shots about they should have been in the top four and they should be in here, here in New Orleans. The four teams that's playing in these games, they earned it, man, no matter how you look at it. They yeah, earned you, it. You can't earn it after the fact. Yeah, right. I mean, I, I'm just saying, Ohio, Ohio State deserved to be here. Yeah, that's true. Hey, that's you know, true. hey, TCU, you shouldn't have lost to Baylor if, if you want you know, don't, to. Don't cry. That's a big deal, too, Kato. Think about it. If they take TCU, then Baylor got a yeah, case you, to stay. TCU put a beat down on Ole Miss. Yeah. Okay, big deal. What's next? Yeah. Next. Thanks, Kato. Happy New Year, buddy. Okay, uh, 
we'll, 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 you have to go. One last call. Final call for you of this year will be from uh, our friend out in uh, Iowa. Robert is next. Rob, what's up, man? Hey, how are you doing, Marcus? Pierce? I'm good, brother. I'm good. Good to hear from you again, man. Nice to hear from you, Marcus. I, I, I tweet, I tweet you. On yeah. Twitter. I got it. I got it. I got it. He he said you got it. it. He didn't get through the other day, and it kind of made me mad. But you got through today, Rob. We we fixed it, man. Yeah, man. That, that was a bummer for me. Ah, uh, hey, Marcus, Marcus, Marcus Fair, you are my man. I, we are we are a brother, blood we, brothers. We blood brothers, man. We blood brothers. That's it, man. Hey, are you ready for the game tomorrow? Yeah, I I want you I, I want you to pick out you on you on my you on Sunday on we gonna pick me up and go pick out how to eat so I can tweet you out right. Like. He want he want us to pick him up, take him to eat. Yeah, take them to eat. Yeah. That's yeah. Well, we gonna have to make a world tour for these <laughs> for for the fans, man. <laughs> Marcus and T-Town of SEC Network, we need a bus. <laughs> we have one. We need a plane. We need a plane. <laughs> <laughs> we got the bus. Hey, Robert, uh, any plans for the new year other than watching the game? Uh, we can, uh, we, can uh, um, we are going to uh, go the all, all night. Drink wine and beer all night and drink on what the thing. Rob, drinking wine and beer. Hey, hey, Rob, make sure you find your pretty girl to kiss at 12 midnight, man. I've been trying, man. I've been trying, but no. Hey, come on, Robert. I, I, I caught, hey, hey, Robert, I caught you and Tammy down at an hour. Tell me. You're, Rob, you a modern day you a modern day cameo, man. You got you got to find your girl, and give you a kiss under the mistletoe at midnight, hey, man. Hey, Paul, how yeah, about Robert. how about you? How about me? Are you give me a kiss? Paul, Paul oh. gonna get a kiss from Miss Feinbaum, but he gonna get hey, beat. Considering down. some of the alternatives in New Orleans tonight, I, Robert, you look pretty good right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thanks, Robert. Happy New Year, my friend. We'll talk to you in the New Year. And I know you have, Happy to, New Year, Rob. You have to head out to uh, get ready for some stuff, so we'll catch you tomorrow morning on the right, uh, SEC Nation. Swagoo out. We'll be right back. We're live in New Orleans. This is the best of the Paul Feinbaum podcast. Welcome back to New Orleans. And a lot of uh, Alabama fans have shown up. Uh, I, I, dealt with, I, I dealt with Ohio State fans for the first three hours. And uh, speaking of Ohio State, a proud, a proud uh Alum of Ohio State, and and one of the I want all the Alabama fans to give Joey Galloway a big welcome because he's been such a fan this year. <laughs> See, I told you, <laughs> they, these are good people. I mean, you're starting early. Yeah. I thought you'd ease me into this thing before you started acting <laughs> no. like I, I didn't like Alabama. No, uh, in in fairness, uh, I mean, you, you've had a lot of good things to say about Alabama. But one thing that I think I was just telling you during the break. I mean, you've been. Uh, doing, you've been all over the network this year, and uh, I mean, you've given opinions. You, mm-hmm. you, it's unlike Danny Cannell, doesn't seem like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, Danny's out in California. Take, take it easy. He's not here to defend himself. He's in California enjoying the sun. We're down here freezing, actually working for a living down here in this cold weather in New Orleans. Yeah, it, and I've been here many times in the years. I've never, it's never been this cold, and it's the sun hasn't gone down yet. Yeah, this is going to be a, a scary night because I'll be out there uh, for three hours later on, so it'll be really cold. So uh, let's talk about uh, what you've been talking about. And, and I mean, it's, when you talk as, for as many hours as, uh-huh. as you guys have done down here, uh, do you, when you go back at night, you start thinking, okay, this really matters, that doesn't. I mean, what, what, what really matters in this game tomorrow night? Everything I say matters. And uh, <laughs> when I go back, when I go back, I think to myself, yep, everything I said out there mattered. Confidence. Um, yeah, I, I think that uh, when I look at this game, more things have to go right for Ohio State to win this game than have to go right for Alabama to win this game. But then when you think about what Ohio State has been through 
and, and along the way when they lose Braxton Miller, you, you, you think, okay, this team's they're, they're not going to make it through, and they do, and then they lose JT Barrett, and then again you say, oh, well, they're playing Wisconsin, and Vegas makes them an underdog the day after they lose JT Barrett and they find a way to win. So, you know, at the end of the day, when you think more things have to go right, this is a team that has found a way to make those things go right in their favor. Uh, I think we're going to see a really good football game. And I think I think these are all fair fair points. Uh, in terms of your feeling about Alabama, and, and some of this we've covered, most of it we've covered because we talk every week. But uh, as we're now at the precipice of this game, uh, what would concern you the most if if, if you're trying to make a case, a, a reasonably strong case, for Ohio State to win? Uh, the number one concern is Amari Cooper for sure. And, and, and people have taken this statement the wrong way every time I've said it. If you're a defense and you're playing against Alabama, your number one concern is Amari Cooper. Uh, there is a reason that he was in New York for the Heisman Trophy uh, presentation. He, he, he's, the, he's a guy that can score from anywhere. He's a guy that when the ball is in his hands, uh, he can make your entire defense look bad. So if I'm a defense and I'm trying to shut down Alabama, the number one thing I'm doing is I'm going to try to take away Amari Cooper. And people think that means you hold him to no catches. That's not what that means. That means you don't give up the 60-yard play, that 70-yard play, the 80-yard play. And if you can do that, if you can force Blake Sims to look elsewhere, to go to his other guys, and, you know, when you have as large a gap, when, when the Andrew White has 37 catches, and Amari Cooper has 115, well, then doggone it, I'm going to find out if DeAndre White can beat me on game day. And that's why I think that's what I think you do against Alabama. Now, at the same time, if you're trying to score points on this defense, they are stout in the middle. They have big guys. They have 350, 315, 320-pound guys in the middle. I think these spread offenses, similar to Auburn, can put points on a defense that has the big run stoppers in the middle that – aren't very agile that don't you know cover sideline to sideline so i think you stay away from running it between tackles you go wide find your find your you know try to gain yards on the outside and then you take shots downfield at their corners chatting with joey galloway joey uh, certainly uh I, I haven't had a chance to really keep up with our good friend danny cannell but i imagine uh, during the uh tc Miss game he was he was having like uh you know it was nirvana for him uh i, I didn't see a lot of the game because of uh, transportation uh, right. uh, I was in transit, but what I saw was pretty ugly. What, what did you make out of it? Um, TCU came in with an attitude, and, and I have a, just a ton of respect uh, for the way Coach Patterson has handled himself uh, since this Sunday when when the bomb was dropped on, right. on TCU's uh, avenue to the playoff. The way he's handled himself has been very professional. And clearly their preparation, their focus, their desire to play today was there. And I give them a ton of credit because people, the biggest question is, how motivated are they to come play in this game after believing that they should probably be here in New Orleans and they're not? They were in Atlanta. And they went out and they played football and nobody, and I mean nobody, I don't care if you're an Alabama fan, I don't care if you are a Florida State, Oregon, or Ohio State fan, you could not walk away from watching that game and not believing that that TCU team can compete with anybody in the country. Yeah, and we heard that uh, the day of the uh, announcement that Alabama was, was really a big winner that day because you know, with all due respect to, to Ohio State, uh, it, it, was a, it was an unusual matchup. I mean, if, if this was or if this had been TCU and Alabama tomorrow, what would you have expected? Um, if this had been TCU Alabama, it would have, have been a, a more interesting uh, matchup from the standpoint of TCU does a lot of things on defense. I love watching their defense play. There are certain teams in the country that you can sit down and just watch their defense play and, boy, and say, you know, those guys are scheming. That's interesting in what they do. Uh, I don't know that they could have handled uh, the power and the strength of, of Alabama if they decided to run the ball right at them. I think that Ohio State will be better at that because I think that in this game, Ohio State has the best defensive line, uh, you know, guys that can move around and, and get after the passer with just their front four. So, uh, you know, when you look at TCU and then you look at the quarterback uh, position, we talk about Boykin, uh, <laughs> fun to watch. You know, when, when you see a guy as athletic as him that can also throw the ball, those guys are special. Joey, the other game tomorrow uh, certainly pretty important. Uh, we're not talking much about it down here, yeah. but uh, you know plenty about both, both teams. Uh, how do you see it pointing out? There's another game tomorrow? I thought, the, I thought you were yeah, right. Uh, the the, the, the uh, TaxSlayer.com uh, <laughs> game, or that, that's actually yeah. probably uh, um, the game in Pasadena. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, 
I've been a, a Florida State believer all season long. They have not lost a football game. And, and that's what this is all about is winning football games no matter how you do it. Every game has been close. Every game has been uh, come down to the wire for Florida State. And, and, and they've dropped from one to two to three. And, and, at, and number four, b- before the last show, they, they dropped to number four. And you started to question, what are people looking at? Uh, just win football games, and that's what they've done. I'm picking Florida State in, in the Rose Bowl. I, I think that uh, they may not be the best team, but I do believe they're the team that knows how to win football games. And Jameis Winston, when he's given a chance at the end of games, he finds a way to win. Joey Galloway, uh, freezing, but that's just the beginning for you. A long night ahead. We won't keep you, but we deeply thank you. I appreciate you coming by, Joey. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been fun all season long. You got it. Great stuff. Joey Galloway, we'll be right back. We're live in New Orleans. I love you, Joey. Thank you for listening to the best of the Paul Feinbaum podcast. Tune into the Paul Feinbaum show every day from 3 to 7 Eastern on the SEC Network or on the ESPN radio app. Geico presents Strange Savings Stories. Astronomers detected an interstellar transmission. It stated, Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. The implications were staggering. Was the cosmos telling us we could all save hundreds on car insurance with Geico? Or did their radar merely pick up a signal from the nearby Rufus and Clyde's morning show? We may never know. Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance.